Hey, what's going on guys? Reaper here with Reaper's Papa Sound Supply. So tonight I've got a little live stream to go on for a little bit. Um, I decided that I would do a little bit of this specifically more so for the customer uh, and any viewers that are definitely interested. Uh, this is something that is very unique and different <clears throat> and I've never really had a chance to uh, make one of these. I would do a little bit of this. So, um, basically, what I'm making is a CISO style NBA boonie hat. And the, the, the standard NBA boonie hats were, of course, in country made. Um, and they looked a lot like this here. Now, it's kind of hard to tell with the light I've got, but you guys can see how the individual pieces go around. It makes like a beach ball style look to it. Um, now, I, I've made some NBA and BC boonie hats. Now, the NBA, they usually kind of run this, this weird colored tan, and the BC run usually a straight black. Of course, you saw a mixture of the two during the Vietnam War that uh, kind of spread out in between different, different areas. Um, for those of you that don't know and that aren't really Vietnam savvy, uh, CISO is something that is unique in itself and I'll explain it to you guys because I'm going to give you a little history lesson here especially for some of them guys that uh, are involved in Vietnam but not so much in the special forces side of it and a lot of guys don't know about these style of boonies either or that <clears throat> they were made so CISO is the counter uh, counterinsurgency support office it was established in, on Okinawa in 1963 to supply clothing, weapons, and uh, different types of equipment to special forces operating in Vietnam. Uh, it was principally run by Ben Baker, I believe. Uh, it, the, the mission was to basically issue um, sterile or untraceable types of gear. Um, and a lot of things were developed, such as like the bolo knife, uh, the CISO indigenous rucksacks, which a lot of guys that do Vietnam know them as kind of the SOG style rucksacks. Uh, they made tiger stripe fatigues, um, and they made a lot of VC and NBA style clothing, such as black pajamas, um, and and even NBA style uniforms. And they changed them up quite a bit, pocket styles and whatnot. But they a lot of things they tried to copy uh, almost exactly. Uh, and I believe in, even down to some of the the stampings that the NBA would put on, kind of like a um, like a unit number or something along the lines. So and they did a lot of different things, and it was actually very neat. So what I'm working with right now, and I've got most of this done. I've been working at it most of the day here. Is this one now you guys can definitely tell by the colors are off this one's kind of more of a burnt brownish tan and the reason for that is finding any materials that uh, closely match in color specifically to original wartime material and fabrics is a very tough thing uh, I've had non-stop problems with that and so what usually happens is I wind up having to dye the product to get it a hell of a lot closer than well what it would be if I didn't which isn't a big thing and you know it actually adds to a lot of the realism of especially the Vietnam War and stuff like that are worn so this one I kinda went with a little bit of a darker brownish town and you know, it wouldn't be too far off in color if it was just going to be a standard NBA boonie. But since it's a CISO one, they used a completely different type of coloring for the fabric. It almost comes out like a, a grayish brown or a grayish green. And it's very dark. So I wind up having to dye this a completely different color and get it real close. And all else fails, if it does come out the type of color I want, I'll... Uh, I'll go with a completely lighter shade, make a whole other one, and and get it get it dyed out that way. And I'll probably just dye this one black and run it as a, a VC boonie hat. But um, they're not too terribly hard to make. They're they're pretty simple design. But uh, 
being a little different in style compared to the original NBA Booney hats and being a CISO, it changes some of the structure of it. So from afar, if the recon team was out and they were wearing some of the NBA stuff, you know, an NBA team's going to take this first glance at them and they're not going to react as quick or they're going to think, oh, yeah, hey, that, that's probably one of our guys until they realize they got a bunch of U.S. equipment on and they're like six foot tall. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and pretty much finish this up. The only other thing I'll have to do after I finish it tonight is I'll have to put the air grommet holes in the sides and then obviously dye it. So uh, that's something that I'm not going to live stream, obviously, those two parts, mostly because, well, there's no point in it. But I will show a finished product of it, absolutely. Um, so it's, it's, it's one of those things, guys. You get a lot of different things like this made and, and do kind of product reviews on them and even some little, little uh, oh, product trailers slash uh, short film stuff to kind of add to it. Kind of like that first one I put on this page here a week or two back. So it's uh, a lot to look forward to here in the future. And there's going to be one that I'm going to try and do at this actual event that I got to go to as well. So you guys might get to see something that's a whole new level of awesome. <laughs> anyway, get to this. So a lot of times to get these inner parts, which is the inside section, is I'll go ahead and put it on and shove it down a little bit. <sighs> now, sometimes I make stuff like this a little bit bigger because the material I use isn't pre-shrunk. So a lot of times I have guys, when they get them, um, go ahead and run through the washer and dryer to, to get the desired um, sizing that they want. There's usually a little bit of room to play for sure when making something of this size.
So one of the main things to note here, guys, is the, the main difference between one of these and an original is the originals a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times they had a type of waterproofing in them inside the actual uh, crown area of the hat. Um, it was usually a, a very thin plastic material. I've even seen them done with, believe it or not, newspaper or, um, oh, what would that be called? Kind of like palm leaves. Um, not all of them had it, and it was also one of those things that uh, strong possibility that the, the CISO versions didn't. So they made basically just a standard boonie hat cover, which in a way was kind of nice too. It was nice to have them to waterproof them so your head's not all wet. But at the same time, if you really think about it, having that plastic in there can make it pretty hot. Um, you're, you're looking at a jungle that these guys were operating in and because of that any anything that would close off air or any type of movement like that could make it a very uh very rough time <laughs> and of course the other thing that makes it a little bit different than an actual NBA boonie hat is with the NBA boonie hats, you guys can see that the edging around the brim here is a pretty thin strip. So when they folded it over and sewed it around, it wasn't very wide. Well, on the CISOs, they're about this wide kind of like a double fold, almost like using binding tape. And they had a double stitch on them. And then, of course, the, the other obvious thing was the coloring on them was completely different. It was something new and, and uh, kind of unique in a way. Um, if you want me to shorten the brim down, that, that's entirely up to you, man. Uh, you got to let me know. It's your hat, uh, Ian. So if, if you want the brim shortened, you need to let me know how much. Um, if you want to keep it the same length, then I'll keep it the same length. Right now, I've got it the exact same size as the regular NBA, which I kind of copied off of that photo you sent me. Um, if you want me to shorten it, let me know by how much. I'll go ahead and mark it and shorten the brim and then put the edging on it for you. Because um, that's pretty much the last thing I got to do to finish up this hat, other than the dyeing and the vent holes. That's it. Well, the photo I'm looking at, bud, looks like it's got about the same uh, width brim. Uh, it wouldn't be anywhere near as short as the uh, the sog, the black, the black sog boonie hat that I made for you. So, uh, if you, if you want me to shorten it, uh, you, you got to let me know how much. I don't want to. I don't want to take a a run at it and shorten it too much, because if I run it too short. And it won't look right. I've actually got the uh, the photo pulled up right now, Ian. That's um, what I'm looking at. Um, to me, looking at that and the brim on these two, it looks like they're about the same. Uh, looking at the stitch in the circular pattern, which you can usually tell about how... Uh, how wide the brim is by looking at the stitches and it, it looks like it's pretty much the same size
So there's the there's the repro, and there's the original. So of course it won't be uh, <laughs> as wavy as it is once I put the uh, the edging on it. So I actually believe this one's a little a little a little shorter brim than this one is. So. Okay, all right. As long as you're sure, man. If you if you want it shortened, uh, like I said, I had no problem doing that. All right, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Things look a little different. Uh, running the uh the live stream you know cameras and whatnot but i'll uh i'll get you finished photos too that way you can see it actually on <laughs> on adding the mannequin and stuff like that so if you're good with that man i'm gonna go ahead and run the side the trim piece on it and get that worked up for you if you want me to run a, a little bit um see here ah. if if I take it down to basically the first stitch around takes off about a quarter of an inch so I can take it down a quarter of an inch or I can take it down closer to a half of an inch Quarter? Okay. That's what I'll do. Now, keep in mind, man, if, if you still find it to be uh, too long after, after we get to Tigerland, um, don't hesitate to let me know because it, that's, that's a real simple fix at Tigerland. If it's still too long, I'll take the, edge, the edging off of it there and trim it down a little more for you and just sew it back on. That would be a pretty quick job. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's kind of my philosophy, man. I, it's like when we did the uh, uh, the Sog style Benny hat for you, the black one. I, I started out with the brim this size, actually, and after I got the whole thing put together, that was the very last thing I did. That's usually the always the very last thing that I do is the brim, because looking at the brim, well, you can you can easily mark it and then go ahead and cut it from there. So the brim looks like 
you know, it's it's too short if you uh, <clears throat> if you cut it beforehand, and sometimes it can be. So, like you said, it's definitely wiser to start out wider and then trim it down. That's an easy thing, man. Like I said, if it winds up being too long there, we'll, uh, we'll trim it down and, and shorten it for you even more. But like I said, if you caught the earlier part of the video, um, I will run it through a dyeing process, and I'm probably going to wait until your uh, your NVA boots come in and dye them at the same time. Uh, that way, I don't have to waste any extra dye, and I can get kind of the the color correction right for it. All right, buddy. <clears throat> Before I sew that on there, let me know what you think of that. Is that a little better? Or width-wise? Right on. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and put this edging on then. Get that part done for you. All right. Let's see here. Now this will be very very interesting. Now, for those of you out there wondering why I've been doing a lot of live streams like this uh, for the, the business page, is part of the reason is I wanted to give one my customers the opportunity to jump in and see their products being made, but at the same time, instances like this where they can come in, see it being made, and if they see something they want changed up or done a little differently, they can throw it out there and kind of get an idea of what I need to do before I proceed, which makes it a lot easier in the long run to be able to confer with somebody, almost like you're right there, uh, then to kind of go back and forth between emails or texts and then get it done and then have to go back, take it apart, or make a whole new one.
But to tell you guys what, this is one unique way of doing a whole new style of marketing, if you think about it. Um, how many people do you guys know, or companies do you guys know, that have marketing stuff to their customers, that they allow them a very unique opportunity to, to watch, or even add input as an item is being made.
Oh, no, no shit. <clears throat> so I realized to some people that this type of thing could be a little boring, but at the same time, you got to admit it is a very interesting thing to see a product being made firsthand.
All right, Ian, but room. Um, I'll have you check it out real quick. <clears throat> that is all finished up. So all I got to do for you is get the vent holes on it and get it dyed. So if you're uh, you're ready for that, it's good to go, buddy. Right on, man. That's what I like to hear. So you have a great night, man. I'm going to go ahead and end this live stream. I figured I'd uh, run a little bit of this for you. That way you could kind of check some of it out and see uh, the finished part of it there. So uh, as soon as I get it dyed and all the vent holes on it, man, I'll get you some good photos and maybe even uh, run a little photo op with the thing for you too. So Everybody else watching, guys, I appreciate it. You know, I love it when you guys stop in, and I love giving you guys history lessons. But uh, until the next one, guys, I appreciate it. You stay frosty, and have a great night.